a school to get signed up for classes, but please don't leave if you still have questions. Okay? That's that's why we're here. We have anybody who's wearing a Kirkwood shirt. Um, the whole purpose is to make sure that you are 100% comfortable, ready to go. Um, I think our next slide is a real quick welcome from our president. No matter where you're at in your educational journey, you've made a great choice to come to Kirkwood. This college is an amazing place, full of exciting opportunities that can help better prepare you for your next chapter in your life. I know your college experience here is gonna be incredibly rewarding, but it's not always gonna be easy. Challenging for many different reasons. I speak from personal experience because I used to sit in the same seat as you do now. As a first generation community college graduate, I faced many different challenges and obstacles. There were even times I doubted myself and questioned my abilities, but I never quit. Despite the challenges, I reached out when I needed help and I never let anyone keep me from achieving my dreams. And you shouldn't either. So when you come across your challenges this year, I encourage you. Take advantage of all the resources that Kirkwood has to offer. You can find them all by going to kirkwood.edu slash students. There, you'll discover all the tools available to help you realize your amazing potential to do great things. And remember, every single member of our faculty and staff is here to help you along the way, including me. So don't be afraid to ask. We're all very proud that you're here at Kirkwood and can't wait to see what your next chapter holds for you. Study hard and best of luck. We may have forgotten to tell you that this morning is going to be a little interactive. It's not going to be us standing up here doing all the talking and you doing all the listening and note taking. Um, this is one of the very rare occasions where we will invite each and every one of you right now to grab your cell phone, if you have one, and we would like to pose a question to you. We would like you to think about what you believe are the skills that are most important to enjoy academic success. So grab your phone. I'm going to do a little switch around Every, here. Everyone's welcome to participate in this, not just students, everyone. We would actually, if you have your cell phone out, and believe me, this does not happen very often in class. The professor is not going to let you do this, but we will let you this morning. Grab your phone and go to menti, M-E-N-T-I dot com. It will prompt you for a code. Menti, M-E-N-T-I dot com. And the code is 5623. Five six one seven. And we'd like to ask you, what skills do you think are necessary to be successful in college? Once you start typing in your responses, they'll populate up here on the screen. Depending on um, how frequently that response is identified, thank you for participating. Depending on how frequently, um, we'll determine the size of that. So. Are you seeing any themes yet, Jeff? It's kind of early. Yeah, Time management is there. huge. perseverance or determination, that grit, right, that makes people successful. Time management is front and center, that is huge. Uh, in high school, I've been 
for, for those of you coming from high school, every moment of your day is dictated to you exactly how you're going to spend it. You get to college and you're in class for three hours, um, a couple days a week, and all of a sudden you have all this free time and you have to manage that time because that time you have to use to study and prepare for classwork even though you're not in class. So finding that time management, I often tell students to make a calendar, set reminders. Uh, on day one of class, we're gonna talk about syllabus, schedule all of your exams, put reminders in there, uh, homework due date, everything. Put it in your, your Google calendar or whatever you use, set reminders so you don't forget the day ahead, hopefully. And also make sure you're scheduling time to study. Right? It should be like brushing your teeth. It should be routine. It should be an everyday part of your life. Uh, you have to do this in order to maintain and keep up with things. The pace of courses are going to be quick. If you guys are coming in in the summer, when the pace is typically a lot faster than normal, so that time management and discipline are going to be crucial to your success. I think the very first thing that Jeff said is unbelievably important. I, did. I knew it was a lifetime ago when I was in high school, but I mean, a typical high school day was, you know, you start at eight o'clock, you go until three, you had a whole bunch of teachers in the hallways reminding you about this, reminding you about that, and then overnight you become a college student and you're in class three hours a day. We start as early as 7 a.m., we go until 9 p.m., and oftentimes, students, you will have, you will have a say in you create your schedule. Occasionally people will come to us and say, look, I need to be done by noon every day. Others will come to us and say, look, I can't start until noon every day. Uh, okay. You know, technology is a wonderful, <laughs> wonderful, <laughs> wonderful thing. Well, just to be honest, Mark and I usually require lasers and smoke to do our presentation, so that didn't work today either. Um, does anybody know what the password to, it's, to know? It's on, on the laptop, on the picture right there, it says performance one. Wonderful. the wonderful voice from the back of the auditorium. Thank you. So we posed this very same question. What skills do you think are necessary to be successful in college to our faculty? And I want to jump back and show you what they said, because I think you might be surprised. This came That's out cool. of a, a faculty meeting with the math science department. I asked uh, my colleagues who were just in this or there and what to say. So it looks pretty familiar. So you're on the same you're on the same wavelength as our as our faculty. That is a very encouraging sign, realizing the importance of time management, being organized. I see resilience up here. I heard you say grit. So much of it just boils down to just the the mental toughness. The next several slides, I'm going to turn over to Jeff. Um, again, these are more from a faculty perspective. So we talked a little bit about the time management and that's this balancing from the <coughs> back of that and making sure that you are scheduling plenty of time not to study but to have a life outside of the classroom too, right? Everybody in here has a life beyond just the academics. We understand that, so, but make sure you're balancing things. Make sure you're finding time to study, you have to schedule work, time with friends, family, that's all very important things. Self-care, sleep's not an option, all right? Um, so just make sure you're balancing, but make sure you're prioritizing it. And, and this is an investment, not just in monetary investment going to school, but this is an investment in yourself, so your time is also part of that investment. So prioritize that as well. Um, is there anything else? Uh, yeah. So just make sure you're focusing. Know yourself. Know what's going on. Communicate with your instructors. I can't stress that enough. 
If something comes up, talk to your instructors. Let them know, hey, I'm not going to be in class. This is something came up. You don't have to be specific, but just let us know. Communicate with us. If you're going to miss um, homework assignments, if you're going to miss exams, you have to be in front of that. Uh, instructors are much less forgiving if you come to them a day after an exam and say, hey, I wasn't there, when can I make this up? Because sometimes the answer might be, well, you can't. Um, so you be aware of that. But often if you're ahead of it and you're proactive and say, hey, there's something going on, is there any way I can schedule the test ahead of time, or what can I do to, to make this up? They're more likely to work with you in that case. Right? You want to talk about my hub? Is that what we answered you? Yeah. <laughs> so, again, if you have your phones out, you might think about downloading uh, my hub. So, Kirkwood has an app. This is your go to for everything. Uh, this is going to have schedules for the college, it's going to have reminders from the college, it's going to integrate with your classes. So, we all use a learning management system it's called Brightspace. Maybe you've heard of Blackboard or things like that. It's the same basic deal. But MyHub will portal you into all of that. Registering for classes through MyHub, adding a class, dropping a class, checking on financial aid, anything that you need to do that's related to Kirkwood, you can find through MyHub. So I highly recommend downloading that app and putting that on your device. Is it possible some of you already have that on your, on your apps? Yeah. The other thing I'll point out too, this, this is important, it says it right there, Kirkwood email. By law, you've heard of HIPAA, right? Okay, so as students in higher ed, you also have rights, it's called FERPA, and it's the same basic rules for your privacy. In other words, as an instructor, I can't communicate with you regarding classwork outside of a secure server. That means I have to use your Kirkwood email to communicate with you. So if you email me from a Gmail account or something like that, I will reply to your Kirkwood email. So make sure you're checking that email. Forward it, if you're, if you're based off of a different email server, just forward those messages. Whatever you have to do, don't miss those. I argue this with my son all the time. He refuses to check it, but he's missing things. And it's just important, right? That to understand that we can only communicate with you through a secured server and it has to be through Kirkwood's email account. Oh, there we go, nerds and students right there. Okay. Um, connect with someone on campus. The most successful students, especially in, in very rigorous courses, are those who can make friends in class. Remember, everybody's in the same situation that you are. Uh, you're going to make friends in class, you're going to meet people, don't be afraid to reach out and make connections. Form study groups. Study groups are powerful ways to study if you don't mess around too much, if you stay on top of the path. Um, connect with your instructor. Here at Kirkwood, you're going to be in very small classes, right? Maybe 30 at the very most? 30 at the very most. That's pretty much the cap, usually less than that. For my courses, it's 24 because that's the capacity of our lab. So you're going to have a small class size, but you're going to get to know the folks in your class. And it's always, as an instructor, it's very gratifying. The first day of class, you walk in and everybody's scared and nervous and no one's talking. And then by the last day of class, you come in and you can hardly get them to shut up because they're integrating and they're having fun and talking to each other. It's, it's a lot of fun. Um, so the small class size, getting to know other students, getting to know your instructors, we're gonna know your name, we're gonna know if you're there or not there. Uh, it makes it really easy for us to keep track and on top of things. Uh, but we're not gonna come to your house and knock on your door and say, hey, have you been studying? Uh, we're gonna try to give you those reminders, but we're not gonna hold your hand the whole way. So make sure you're staying on top of things. Ask questions early and often. Uh, don't be afraid to contact your instructors and ask questions, either by email. All instructors at Kirkwood are required to have uh, five hours a week of office hours. And that will be given to you in the syllabus, um, what our hours are. And office hours are not, do not disturb time there. Please come in and talk to me time. I'll be in my office working, but you can call me. 
email me, you can stop by and chat, come ask me questions. It's the best thing you can do. It lets me know two things, you're engaged and that you're willing to work on the things that you're struggling with. And there's gonna be things that you're gonna struggle with. That's okay. The important thing is that grit, determination, work through it. And asking for help is the best thing you can possibly do. We love to help for you. We're also fairly flexible. Flexibility's on there too. So it's this idea that um, even if it's not my office hour, I will constantly uh, answer emails. I use uh, a scheduling software. Students want to meet outside of my office hours if I'm available. They can schedule a time and come in. Uh, sometimes when they just see me in the hall, they'll stop me and, and ask me a question. We're always happy to answer questions. We're usually very flexible. I've even done Zoom meetings at eight, nine o'clock at night with students that are just struggling on something. Zoom, as much as we don't necessarily like Zoom, it has utility sometimes, and this is one of the times where it comes in uh, very handy. Hey, you emailed me this question, it's kind of big. Let's talk through this. Let's, let's grab one soon. Syllabus, does everybody know what a syllabus is? See a few heads nodding, no hands in the air. <laughs> Someone for interaction. It's still early in the morning. <laughs> Uh, I warned you we were throwing a lot of information at you. You've been warned. Round and fire. There, there is a quiz at the end. <laughs> Your syllabus is a very important document. It's in, it, it's actually changing. Uh, so I, not maybe this summer, but in the fall, the syllabus is going to become an online link, uh, which is going to be something entirely different in a lot of ways, but it's also exactly the same as what you'll probably see this summer. This summer you'll likely get handed uh, a paper copy of a syllabus, and this document's going to have a lot of legal type wording in it. It's going to be connections to all of Kirkwood's resources that we're going to talk about here in a moment, but at the top it's going to tell you instructor information and contacts. It's going to tell you the course, what it meets, rooms, all that stuff. You probably already know that because you have my hub. Um, but some of the most important things you're going to get out of the syllabus are the class policy. Right? It's all important that the class policies, I would make that a priority. The class policies that are spelled out in here will be exactly where the points are coming from the course, how they're going to be graded, how you're going to be assessed. So where does your grade come from? Everybody cares about that. The other thing that's going to be in there are late homework, late exam policies, and this is where instructors have the freedom to kind of set their own criteria. So every instructor is going to be slightly different on how we handle assignments and due dates, and how we handle exams and due dates. Right? If you get an extension, if there's redos, often there's not. Most instructors don't have redos. Uh, so make sure you're paying attention to those classroom policies. Those are really, really important. So that's something you should seek out, maybe write down or highlight, get to know for each of your courses. Questions there? Awesome. There's a lot of information in the syllabus. I, this is really, really me paraphrasing in a very, very simple way. But if you could think of it as all the, if you have a question about what kind of resource, what can I find that would be helpful inside the classroom, I would argue that you could find it in the syllabus. On the other hand, if the question is what kind of resources are available to me outside the classroom, I would argue that it could be found inside your new student guide. We, uh, when we helped you check in this morning, we provided you with a bunch of information inside your folders. Hopefully you have an agenda for the morning. You have this new student guide. Hang on to this. Hang on to this during your time here. Whether you're here for a semester or a year or several years, we hope it will be very, very handy information for you. We get questions all the time, you know. Kirkwood's on a, a real traditional um, semester system. Our fall semester is 16 weeks long. Our spring semester is 16 weeks long. We'll get questions like, hey, do you know when spring break is going to be in the spring of 2024? Yeah, we actually do. We actually do. So important dates are in there. 
Um, you'll find all kinds of uh, academic resources, departments, addresses, phone numbers, office locations, a lot of information in there. So please, uh, please hang on to that. You'll all be given the opportunity to double check with financial aid before you leave this morning. Uh, again, I mentioned the highlight is you come to campus, you get signed up for classes, and then we are ready to go later on in the month of May. Um, we've kind of adopted the green light, red light, uh, yellow light system with our financial aid when you go in, and again, maybe this is, you're familiar with this already, but green means you're good to go. Yellow is more of a, you know, less of a caution and more of a, let's just double check and make sure that all our, our ducks are in a row here. So you check in in Iowa Hall, which is the building right next door to, to where you are right now. Um, in a few moments, we will be dismissing you by your areas of interest. You'll go to different parts of campus, get signed up. We'll come right back to Iowa Hall and you'll have the opportunity to just literally go up one floor if you'd like to meet face-to-face uh, -face in person with um, a financial aid expert. So there's a lot of um, fun activities and things to do outside the classroom here. This uh, is far from being a dull and boring campus. On any given semester, we'll have almost 250 different free activities and events, uh, a number of them held in this very space. We have stunning, um, both theater and vocal and instrumental uh, musical opportunities in here. Um, and you might be asking yourself, how do I find out about all this information? Well, one more time, one maybe final time, we'll ask you today to um, grab your phone. And if you would like to text the word Kirkwood to that number, 71444, what um, it will allow you to do is receive text once a week and it'll be a summary of all the activities and events going on on that campus that day, that week. Um, you can tailor it towards a different campus if you'd like. We're not going to bombard you and, and spam you to, to daylights, but we want to give you information about, you know, hey, there was a doubleheader in softball yesterday and baseball played the day before, or whatever the case would be. This place was packed several weeks ago with um, a Holocaust speaker that was even an overflow room. So it's, it's going to give you important information, things you'd like to know. I will also tempt you and tease you and say that someone in the next 15 minutes will be randomly selected to receive a $25 gift card from the college just simply by signing up for this. Now I hear a little more chatter, not much more. They're an incredibly polite, quiet group. I think they just want to tell me to zip it so they can go get signed up for classes. Um, this is a really, really uh, cool building that you first checked into, Iowa Hall. It's hard for me to believe that I could get this excited about reopening an old building. But Iowa Hall was closed for two and a half years. We went two and a half years without a cafeteria, without a lot of stuff. We moved 100 employees out of the building, completely renovated it, and $25 million later, we have a new student center. I would invite you when you're done getting signed up for classes to just browse around and enjoy that space. Up on the top floor, there's the admission office, financial aid, counseling, an amazing food pantry. The second floor where you walked in, coffee shop, information desk, um, lovely, lovely large group meeting spaces. And then down on the first floor is our cafeteria and our Apple store. So, I think our time is up. Um, I'm going to invite um, the real gentleman who's in charge. Uh, oh, Tyler, yeah, you're here. Please rescue us, okay? The Thank last you. thing we want you to understand from Mark and I's perspective, there's a lot of support here at Kirkwood. If you're struggling, if anything's going on, reach out. Reach out to your instructor, reach out to the resources that are available. We're here to help. So by all means, welcome to Kirkwood. Good luck. Feel free to give them a round of applause. So my name is Tyler Porter. I work in the admission office here. Our team oversees a lot of the coordination for these days and large campus visit days here on campus. 
A um, couple of things just so you know, this is the last time that we will all be together in one large space like this. So the, up next, we are gonna start getting registered for classes, having students go meet with their academic advisors. Um, students, we are going to split you from your guests. I know this can be a little scary for maybe the first time, but the reason for this is so that you can start connecting with your advisor, getting to know them, they can get to know you. Um, you start understanding how they want you to communicate with them, and you're just able to do that a little bit more independently, since you will be going through that kind of on your own as you're in college here. So students, when I start dismissing you, you will be taking all of your material with you. You will not be back in this room today. Guests, you guys are going to stay in this room. We have a couple of sessions for parents and guests with some things that might be relevant to you and kind of information that you're seeking as well while they're getting registered. Um, at the end of registration, students, there's going to be staff there to help assist you guys, but we do want to make sure that everyone gets an Eagle card. So this is your Kirkwood ID, and you can get that today as long as you have your driver's license with you. Um, there will be two locations. Where you guys checked in today, there's the information desk right on the second floor there. That is one location. And then the other location is in our computer lab, the Allsop lab, which is where about half of you guys are going to register at, actually. So make sure you're guided to that room, try to get your Eagle card, that gets you free access to all of these things that Mark was including and talking about here as well. Um, if you don't have your ID with you today, that is fine, you can get that at any point. But again, we want you to do as much stuff as you can since you made the trip to campus. And then after registration, that is when the guest sessions are going to be finishing as well. You guys will be able to meet back up where we checked in today. And there is a resource fair. So if you need to talk to anyone about housing options still, or student employment, or tutoring, or financial aid is gonna be available on the third floor. We want you to make sure you have all of those questions answered before you leave. So I'm gonna start dismissing groups here. And students, as I mentioned your program, you can simply grab your information, uh, your materials that you have with you, and there'll be a staff member waiting in the door over there to take you to your area. So our first group going today is Animals, Food, and Land. Anyone who is interested in agriculture, science, culinary arts, golf course and athletic turf grass, landscape, parks and natural resources, or vet tech, please grab your materials, students. And Holly Feldman will be over there uh, to take you to your advisor. 